you today, God. Yes, we do, Lord. Let us look to him. God, we thank you so much thank you. for the things you've done in our lives. Some things we've recognized and some we've even taken for granted. Yes. But God, we stop right now to say yes. thank you. Yes. Thank you, God. You get the glory, Lord. Yes, God. You get all of the praise. And God, as we look at your word today, we ask that you would speak to us. Challenge us, arrest our attention, God. Help us to see where it is you desire for us to go. Yes, God. Help us to see who it is you desire for us to be. God, challenge us in your word today. We thank you for it because you have not left us to try and figure this thing out mm -hmm. on our own. Yes, God. But you've left instructions for us to help our lives. So God, help us not to hear a sermon, but to take instruction for our lives. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Move us to where it is you desire for us to be. God, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins and my transgressions and iniquity. And although they be many, God, would you just cleanse me? Yes, God. That I might be able to be a tool in your toolbox. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We want to use this thought today for just a little while. A, a spiritual system. A spiritual system. A spiritual system. Have you ever had one of those moments in life where, where you said to yourself, you know what, I wish... I could wipe the slate clean mm -hmm. and start all over. Have, have, have you ever had one of those, those moments? I believe most of us, if not all of us, have, have found ourselves before in, in, in a difficult stage in life or in a headspace where where we said to ourselves, if we didn't say it out loud, but we entertained the thought that it, it would be so nice <laughs> All right. to start with a clean slate. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> kind of like, like, like if you're drawing a picture on, on a sheet of paper and, and the picture doesn't look the way you want it to look or you've made some mistakes and you can simply just erase it or crumble up the piece of paper and throw it away and start on another sheet of paper. Wouldn't it be nice if, if life was that easy? <laughs> that, that, you know, that we could, wouldn't it be nice if any time you didn't like a decision you made or a choice you made and, and, and you were able to just like erase it. Because for some of us, there are some relationships we would, <laughs> like we, we, we'd erase, we'd say, you know what? I was in a bad place in my life at that time and, 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 and and you know, ooh, I wish I'd never met that joke. I just wish. <laughs> for, for, for some of us, there, there would be some dates that we wish we never, ever went on. If, and, 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 and if we could just scrub them off the hard drive of our lives, there, there would be some people who we stopped to speak to and made acquaintance with that, that if it was just that easy, we, we, we would simply just kind of erase that and say, no, I don't, I don't even want to remember that anymore or to know that, that, that I made that person's acquaintance. It's, it's, it's kind of like, like having an electronic device or a cell phone or a tablet, and if it's not functioning well, you have the ability to do like a reset, and, and you can reset it or you can restore it back to its original settings. I believe that some of us have had 
some experiences in our lives yeah. that, that we love to just kind of erase and say that, you know, I, I just really like to start over because it would be nice if, if life were, were that simple. But sometimes life just isn't that simple. There's some things that you and I have done that can't be undone. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yeah, yeah, y'all had children together. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's not, you can't like undo that. It's, 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 it's done. So, 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 so sometimes life just isn't that simple where we can kind of erase or start over, but yet, yet there are times where we can do a reset and, and, and we can start from where we are and do something differently from that which we have been doing. Yeah. Uh, 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 you see, in this life that we, that we live in, we are surrounded by, by different systems. And, 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 and many of us function in so many different systems. And there's some systems that are for our development, but there are some that are for our detriment. Yeah. And, and, and God will give us the opportunity to realign ourselves right. or, or, or to shift ourselves from one system because we're surrounded. We're surrounded by systems. Yeah. We, yes. we, we have a system for, for getting dressed in the morning and we're surrounded by systems. We have systems for those things that we have to do when we go to work. We're surrounded by systems, but there are some systems that are better for us, but then there's some systems that are harmful for us. Yeah. And Nehemiah is trying to shift the people from a secular system from living in a secular system to now moving and operating in a spiritual system. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah in his journal, the book that bears his name, we find him trying to help the Israelites restart mm -hmm. and do a reset for their lives. Mm -hmm. And in the earlier chapters, he's come from, from the king's palace to help them restore the wall that was broken down from war that surrounded Jerusalem, and he had come to help them reestablish the worship and the worship that took place in the temple, and he's helped them build, rebuild the wall, but now he's trying to help them shift from operating in a secular way to moving in a spiritual system. He's He's trying to help them move from functioning the way they had been accustomed to to now functioning in a way that's going to, uh, going to develop them because they had been part of a social system that oppressed them. They had been oppressed by neighboring nations and, and, and they had no, their, their, their wall had been torn down, so they had no protection. So, so they're living in an oppressive state. And now Nehemiah wants to help them shift into living in a spiritual system. He's not trying to convince them to do religious stuff, but he wants them to to change their lifestyle, if you would. He, he wants it to become a way of living, a, a spiritual way of living. And as you and I begin this brand new decade, yes, yes. it's a brand new, yes. not only a brand new year, mm -hmm. man, this is a brand new decade. Yeah. A new decade that God has allowed us to become a part of and he wants to make sure that we're functioning in a spiritual system. Because we live in a social order that isn't really looking out for us. We live in a social order that, that is highly oppressive and highly dysfunctional. And here, here, if we can look at how Nehemiah helped the Israelites 
then maybe you and I can gain some principles for ourselves because the truth of the matter is that some of us need to shift into a spiritual thing. All right. All right. I mean, I mean, I mean we, we, we could just be honest. Right. Some of us act more like the world than the world. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about the world from a standpoint of not believing in God. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like from, from, from the standpoint where I'm not honoring God. Mm. Is there a whole lot of people who believe in a being that's higher than humanity? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm talking about living in such a way that, 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 that my life is honoring him, not just acknowledging him. All right, Pastor. All right. All right, Pastor. Nehemiah wants to help them with that. He, he, and, and, and he lays out some principles for them because he wants them, and they even agree to the principles that 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 is laid that are laid out for them because Nehemiah realized that it didn't make any difference to rebuild the wall, All right. rebuild the temple, and still function <laughs> the same old way. All right. See, he, he understood something. It, it, it doesn't make any sense to have spent all of that labor and that hard work rebuilding the wall so that the city could be protected, rebuilding the temple in worship so that people could could uh, be, be equipped for the work of God and still function the same way. So, so he, he's introducing them to this system of living that, that is diametrically different than what they're accustomed to doing. He's he's introducing them to a way of life that's different than what they were used to doing. All right. Because things are new now, and as 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 you and I are in this new year and in this new in this new decade, God has given us an opportunity to do some things different. Will we do it or will we remain with some of our same old habits that haven't helped us in the past? So let's look at this. Let's let's, let's look at it because there there, there, there are a few things that Nehemiah lays out here. There are four of them, but we only have time to look at three. The first thing that he wants them to understand about living in this spiritual system is that the Sabbath is special. All right. Mm. Mm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> he wants them to understand that the Sabbath is something that is sacred. Yeah. And special. Let's, let's look at verse 31. Thanks, Chris. It says, when the neighboring peoples bring Check this out. Merchandise or grain to sell on the Sabbath. We will not buy from them on the Sabbath or on any holy day. And then check out what he says. Every seventh year, we will forego working the land and will cancel all debts. Now, remember, they live in a society where they're neighboring nations. And neighboring nations had their own ways of living and their own ways of functioning. And what Nehemiah wants them to to adopt and adapt to as their new way of living is that the Sabbath ought to be something that is really special. So special so that when neighboring nations bring their goods and their services to sell to us and to barter with us, he says, look, Let's refrain. Let's refrain from from buying from them. Let's refrain from buying from them and exchanging merchandise for them on the Sabbath or on any holy day because what he wants them to understand is that the Sabbath is sacred. It's special. Now, and, and, and I don't want to get into the argument about, well, is the 
the Sabbath on Saturday because there are some who will say and argue that the Sabbath is on a Saturday because it's the seventh day of, of, of the week and actually Sunday is the first day of the week. I don't, I don't, I don't want us to get hung up in, in the weeds on that, but what I want us to understand is that what Nehemiah is trying to get them to understand is that there has to be a time where you pull out of this secular system that you are living in and has to be a time where, because Sabbath means day of rest. Now I'm getting ready to go here. Because I know where we live. We live in America. We never rest. There has to be a time where we refrain from all of the hustle and bustle and grind of life and take time for our soul to be nurtured. Yes, yes. I know, but you don't know how many bills I have. <laughs> you don't know what I'm trying to do. We live in a society that says, work yourself to death. <laughs> That's the society we live in. You look at the... Um, International Labor Organization, and they'll tell you, America is the seventh leading country in the world in working, work hours, work, because we, 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 I got to work so I can get this so that they can think I'm something. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and this, this will go against the grain because we get conditioned. Yeah. Right? According to some research, we work 137 hours more per year than so many, so many other nations. I mean, we work so much, man, it's like, we, we, we just, we just like work and work and work and work and work. We, we work more hours than the Japanese do. We work 260 more hours per year, right, than, than the British do. Now, we don't work as many hours as Mexico does. But when you look at how much imbalance there is in our lives, we, 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 we work 500 more hours per year than the French do. Because they're going to take time to get it in. And here, most of the time, we're doing it to try and impress somebody who we think is trying to keep up with who we think we are. <laughs> and then we wonder, well, why is my soul so malnourished? Yeah. <laughs> because there has to be a set, a, a, a space where I disengage from the grind mm -hmm. and have my soul nurtured. See, if we think about how much time we spend working and grinding, and I'm not saying don't work, because you don't work, you don't eat. But what Nehemiah is trying to get to is that there has to be balance. I know we don't like that word, balance. Because, I mean, in America, it's just like you just get, you get, you, you, you get sucked up in it. And, and then find ourselves 
working so much and neglecting the nourishment of our soul. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Listen, when we leave this planet, we can't take none of this stuff with us. Yes. Nope. <coughs> but the one thing that will be with us is our soul. So, 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 so he says that the Sabbath has to be special. That, 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 that there's, there's some space. There's some time that, that I take in order to disengage from the grind of the social order and have my soul nourished because as my soul gets nourished and I'm better developed spiritually, then guess what? I can deal with the foolishness that happens in the secular world. So he says that the Sabbath is special. This, this way, this, this, this spiritual system that, that the Sabbath is special because my soul needs nourishing. They, they had it so until they even said in the seventh year, we'll give the land a break. And we'll give the land a break, and we won't even work the land because the land needs time to breathe. The land needs time to, to, to replenish and, 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 and to, to, to reset. And in the seventh year, we'll, give, we'll let the land even take a break. When do you, when do you take a break? When do you, like, say, you know what? I need to do something for my soul. <laughs> Since the Sabbath is special. Second thing, though, about this spiritual system, though, is that not only is the Sabbath special, but he says that supporting God's work is critical. Sabbath is special. Supporting God's work is, is, is critical. Let's look at what he says in verse 32 and 33. He says, now, 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 now check this out. Oh, I'm sorry, Tina. They say, <laughs> we, we assume the responsibility for carrying out the commands to give a third of a shekel each year for the service of the house of our God, for the bread set out on the table, for the regular grain offerings and burnt offerings, for the offerings on the Sabbaths, at the new moon feasts, and at the appointed festivals, for the holy offerings, for sin offerings, to make atonement for Israel, and for all the duties of the house of our God. In other words, they recognized that, that the work of the Lord was significant, and supporting the work of the Lord was critical for living in this spiritual system. So they say, look, we're going to assume responsibility that we will take on the responsibility of supporting the work of God because we realize that the work of God begins to help not only the people of God, but also folk who ain't even been thinking about God. <laughs> Because you see, church, mm -hmm. God's work is not just singing songs, reading scripture. Mm -hmm. All right, preach. All right. All right. God's work is about is is about is is, is grasping humanity, mm -hmm. human beings. Mm -hmm. I don't give a who, where are you from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's looking at people through the eyes of God yeah. and seeing that this person has a soul yeah. that needs to be nourished. Yes, yes. yes. And I'll support the work of God mm -hmm. because it's the work of God that's going to create an economy and a kingdom where people, no matter who they are, will be encouraged, will be empowered, will be helped mm -hmm. when they need help, mm -hmm. will be picked up when they fall down. <coughs> Not put down and kicked down, but picked up when they fall down. 
because he wants them to understand something. Remember, they, they were in, they were so used to the dysfunction Get this. They were so used to the dysfunction that it took Nehemiah coming from the palace of Susa where he was the cupbearer for the king to see that, hold up, y'all can't keep living like this. They were so accustomed to the dysfunction that it took somebody living outside of the community, outside of the neighborhood, outside of the dysfunction to say that that's dysfunctional. Mm. So he gets them to say, look, we will assume the responsibility of supporting God's work because they understood how significant God's work had become because they saw it transform their lives. Oh, y'all missed it. <laughs> if he's done anything for you, you ought to be yeah. doing for somebody else. That's right. Thank you. See, Thank see, you. see, that's yeah. what, see we can yeah. get so used to the dysfunction yeah. Yeah. until that, and, and, until even considering what God has done for me is out of the question mm -hmm. because I'm so used to. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that the Sabbath is special. This, this spiritual system is, is understanding that the Sabbath is special. That there's time where, where my soul needs to be nurtured. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and, and not only does my soul need to be nurtured, but the work of God needs to be supported. Mm -hmm. Yes. What Nehemiah was trying to help them understand is that, look, you have what you need to do what God wants you to do. You just got to be willing to give it. Because the work of God needs to be supported. Last thing, last thing about this, 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 this spiritual system, because you have to ask yourself, am I supporting God's work? Am, 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 am I, like with the resources, with resources that I have, do some of my resources help support God's work and, 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 and the betterment of, of people? Does it help humanity? Does it help society? Does, do, do, does, does any of the resources I have, or those resources just for me? No. Mm -hmm. no. Or do I utilize resources that I have to support the work for somebody else. Amen. Last thing. Last thing he says in this, this system was well, three out of the four. It was another one, but we can't, we don't really have time, time to get to it. Um, the Sabbath is special. Supporting God's work is critical. But lastly, strategic giving is essential. In other words, God gifts us with resources. Yes, he does. Right? Yes, he does. And the resources God gifts us with, God desires that we use them strategically. Let, let's look at it in verse 35 real quick, Chris. He says, we also assume the responsibility. Now, now, now remember, this means that, that, that prior to this, they didn't have this responsibility. They say we also assume responsibility for bringing to the house of the Lord each year the first fruits of our crops and of every fruit tree. In other words, what Nehemiah wants to help them understand is that your resources ought to be used strategically. That, that there's a strategy for using what God has given to you. And the strategy is not that the world takes it all from you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't it 
everything so much nicer to send your money where you want it, where you want it to go, <laughs> rather than for someone to take it from you. <laughs> yes, Pastor. Yes. Wouldn't it be so much nicer to live in a social construct where, where, where you're you're sending your money where, boom, you're sending it rather than it being snatched from you. <clears throat> That's what Nehemiah wants them to understand. He wants them to understand that there's a way to secure your resources for the remainder of the year. Now remember, it's a spiritual system that he's introducing them to. It's not the same system that they have been accustomed to functioning in. And he says to them, look, at the beginning of each year, bring the first fruit of your crops to the Lord's house and of every fruit tree. Now, this is what he means by that. The first fruit of your see, of, 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 of your crops. They understood harvest season. It was an agrarian society. So they understood harvest. They understood what it meant to plant seeds and, and, and fruit and vegetables grow and, and, and wheat grows, and that's how you barter and stuff. So what, what Nehemiah is trying to help them understand is that at the beginning of each year, what you do is you set up and you bring a harvest to God. Whatever it is that you decide, you bring it to God. Check this out as an investment for the remainder of the year. In other words, what you're doing is you're bringing, a, bringing it to God, a special offering to God. It's called a first fruit offering. And you're bringing it so that you can secure the rest of the year by saying that, God, I trust you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that you're so good that I'm going to bring this, give this to you. Knowing that you got me for the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Not once the year is out and I see that you got me. I'm gonna bring you a little something, something. No, it's a, it's a different way of thinking. It's a different way, it's a spiritual way. Of thinking and, and 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 Nehemiah wants them to understand that look 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 when you do this what you do is you say you're saying to God God I trust you so much that I don't know what the rest of the year holds but I know that you'll hold me yeah. right and, and 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 what you bring and what I bring is totally up to my oh totally up to each individual but what it means is that, God, I trust you so much that, that I'm, I'm placing this before you at the beginning of the year. Thank you, God. Mm. Knowing that you'll cover me. That's right. Trusting and believing. Yeah. For the rest of the year. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. God doesn't ask us to do anything mm -hmm. that God won't do God's self. Our first fruit was Jesus. Mm -hmm. He says, look, I'm going to give you my son. Knowing that giving you my son is going to cover the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to cover Thank the rest God. of your Thank life God. on earth yeah. and in eternity. Yeah. Thank you, God. Because, because God, because God operates spiritually. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not a part of a spiritual system, I'll keep functioning in a secular way, hoping that I'll receive spiritual results. Yeah. And it just doesn't happen that way. I wish it did. So he says to the people, oh, they say, We'll assume the responsibility <coughs> of bringing the first fruit at the beginning of the year. We've been doing this, I don't know, three, four years. How many years do you know? How many years? Four, five, five years? I don't know. I don't know. But it's one of the things that I'm going to tell you. I'm in, straight up. It's one of the things that has blessed my life 
beyond my wildest imagination. At the beginning of the year, bringing God a special offering, aside from my tithe, aside from my offering, and, and, and saying, God, I trust you so much for you to cover me the rest of this year. I'm, 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 I'm going to invest this now, knowing you got me for the rest. Because I don't know what's going to happen in the rest of the year. I don't, I don't, I don't know who's going to lose a job. I don't know what companies are going to close. I don't know, I don't know what, 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 what may happen. But one thing I do know is that I'm going to trust you yeah. to keep me. Yeah. We have set it up so, so that February is our <laughs> month of first fruit where you bring to God, you bring to, and it's the, that totally depends on you. See, God, God didn't even give like a percentage or an amount or anything like that. God just says, look, you know you. You know what you've been doing. You know what resources you have. Bring something special to me, and I'll secure the rest of your year. Because, you see, living in a spiritual system is completely different than living in the world system. Yes, it is. Because, see, what the world system will do, the world system will tell you to spend, spend, mm -hmm. spend, spend. Look at America. <laughs> Overextended. Death. Right? Debt. And then going to try and figure out, hey, look, how we going to pay for this new war we start? <laughs> That's the American way. I can live in that social construct but not have to be a part of function like that system. I can choose to live in a spiritual system and function in a spiritual system where I understand that there's time where my soul needs to be nourished, that the Sabbath is special. Whatever time you want that to be, that it's, it's special. There's time where, where, where my soul needs to be nourished so I can deal with the foolishness in this world. Where supporting the work of God is critical because the work of God helps empower people. I ain't talking about buying the pastor a car. I'm talking about buying the, the preacher a house. I'm talking about supporting the work of God where, where people are normal, ordinary people are trying to help other people. Yeah. But also where my giving, where I strategically give, and in order for me to strategically give, I just can't keep wasting. Mm -hmm. I know, we live in America. It's a land of waste. And we get conditioned. But God says, live in a spiritual system. A system that doesn't function like the rest of the world. Because it's a spiritual if we could just rest on our feet for just a moment.